Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Haja, a passionate makeup artist and makeup instructor. In today's video, I want to show you a quick and very simple makeup tutorial for people who are an absolute beginner in makeup. I will explain every step simple and detailed so you know what and why you are doing things the way they should be done. Also, another struggle that most beginners are confronted with is what should my makeup kit contain to be able to apply a complete daily makeup look? I will tell you what you need and also put the link to a PDF list you can find in the description box down below. Now, are you ready to master a flawless piece of art? Then let's start! So guys, we start with the skincare part since we need to create a nice smooth surface to work on. So the first step is to find out your skin type and apply a suitable daily moisturizer for your skin. Um, so what I'm using is the Aven Hydrons uh, UV Rich. It's a hydrating cream for dry to very dry and sensitive skin. Um, so I got this from the pharmacy. I do have a combination skin which tends to be dry on the cheek area and oily on the t-zone. So basically you could work with two products when you deal with combination skin. For the t-zone I use the CVR CVR Clear Matte Plus Pores. Uh, it's sebum regulating and as well as hydrating. It's a cream you can use um, but it says it also works as an excellent makeup base so you would actually don't need a primer after using this one. For dry skin types I would recommend a richer textured cream because that will help your skin to get more smooth and not flaky and itchy um, and your makeup will sit perfectly on it. Now for the sensitive skin types uh, I would recommend you to go to the pharmacy and get your product um, since they will consult you and they have a better knowledge in choosing the correct product for your sensitive skin. So I'm going to use a little bit on the cheek area where I said it's dry. So, and, and then I'm going to use uh, this one on my T-zone. This is your T-zone, it looks like a T. You always need to massage the product outwards of your face because that will help your skin uh, to circulate the blood. That will make the ton or the complexion look really nice, fresh and healthy. Same goes now for the primer step. A primer is basically a base product that helps the foundation to stick to the skin. What that means is that your makeup is going to last longer without fading away throughout the day and it will make your foundation look better overall. Now again, depending on what skin type you are, you have the choice between a mattifying, hydrating, pore refining and color correcting primer. Now when working on combination skin, you can work with two different kind of primers, one for the T-zone and one for the cheek area. But as you guys have already seen, I have applied my skincare slash primer um, on the T-zone from Sepia Clear. So I'm all good for the T-zone. Maybe I could use a hydrating primer for the cheek area to make sure that my makeup lasts all day long uh, on the cheek area. So I'm going in for this primer from Too Faced called Hangover. Uh, yeah, this is great for the cheek area. Oh, it's so cool and refreshing as well. Um, I don't want to make it really complicated. I want to sum it up. I don't want to explain too much so you get it confused again. That is why I'm keeping it uh, simple and short. Now onto the color correcting step. What color correcting does is it neutralizes the skin that has a certain surface tone like redness 
or dark pigments. This needs to be done before the foundation step to make our base as flawless as possible so that the only one thin layer of foundation will give us that second skin effect. So I have a palette here with all the color correcting shades uh, to simply explain to you what the shades are used for. So the green in the palette is used for the red skin areas yellow or peachy i don't have yellow here but some palettes also contain yellow shades um, yellow and peachy shades are great for um, neutralizing darkness under the eyes or any other dark spots on the face uh, like aging spots uh, or scars pimple scars now this is important depending on your skin shade one of these colors yellow peachy and orange will neutralize your dark areas yellow will help neutralize fair skin peachy color neutralizes great on medium skin and orange on dark skin shades so basically those three colors um, are for neutralizing darkness on the skin but since darkness looks different on uh, different skin shades uh, that is why not all of these three will work on every skin shade so then we have another color which is purple it's uh, used as a color corrector helping dull looking skin to look bright and fresh before the makeup application with such a palette you can work locally um, but there are also color correcting shades that come in tubes and are, are more creamy like basically like cream um, they are great for all over the face uh, so if you deal with extreme redness uh, all over the face then you can use uh, a green primer that comes in a tube uh, and is cream textured um, as for me i'm going to use a, this peachy shade under my eyes because that is where i deal with darkness on my face Look, it already brightens up the skin without the use of uh, concealer. Then I have some redness here on the cheek area, but that is no problem covering it uh, with the foundation since, uh, yeah, it works well for me. I don't need a green corrector, but there are people who really suffer from uh, very red uh, skin surface tone, and that is why they maybe should use a green uh, primer then we go on to the step of applying foundation here again the skin type needs to be considered again if you deal with oily skin good for you you apply a mattifying foundation if you have a dry skin you look up for hydrating sheer luminous foundations and if you have a combination skin then you again can work with two products i do work with soft matte foundations um, those are more creamy or fluid um, and they are really spread well on on the face um, that is why i always use uh, those uh, because they have also a satin finish like they are not too matte but they are also not too sheer there is something in the middle great for the combination skin you can still instead of working with two foundation you ha also have the option to uh, mix your foundation with a few drop of serum or oil um, uh, for the cheek area that is also an option to make it more sheer but um, I, I have uh, found my product which works well for me um, it looks great both on my cheek and on my t-zone that is why I go for one product. My tip is to apply the foundation on the back of your hand. Um, depending on your face size, it depends on how many pumps is enough, but mainly one to two pumps are more than enough because you have applied a great base already. This is a flat, dense foundation brush. Please make sure your brushes are all clean to use since uh, that will prevent your skin from uh, getting inflammations or any breakouts 
Um, so yeah, I'm going into the product like this and you know, a thin layer. We start with a thin layer and then build up. Uh, we start in the center of the face. We start in the center and work our way outwards to the temples and forehead and the neck. Please, if you don't have found your foundation, correct foundation match, then go and let yourself be consulted um, at Sephora or wherever you get your products uh, so that they will help you to find the correct shape because that is very crucial. My tip of preventing cakey makeup is using a dampen clean beauty blender right after I have spread the foundation all over my face with the foundation brush. The reason I use a foundation brush and a beauty blender is because with the foundation brush you can apply your foundation evenly and then when you go over it with a beauty blender you will get that airbrushed smooth effect. And now about the foundation coverages, you have the option between light, medium, full coverage. I think a medium coverage is great for both day and even makeup since you can build it up and um, yeah, in case uh, there is a spot that is really not covering, um, you can use a high coverage concealer to conceal that spot and make it look less visible. Okay, now I have a face without any dimension, shadows and pops of color. It just looks dull and boring. So to give your face its natural shadows, light and colors back, we start with the highlighting and contouring. For daily makeup, it is enough to be a very soft and decent application. So we highlight the under eye part with a concealer to freshen that part and make it look bright. Then we conceal the highest parts of the face like the nose bridge, its tip, center of forehead and the chin. Just imagine you're standing under a light resource. Those would be the parts that the light would hit. This is a great high coverage concealer. You could also use a medium coverage concealer. Um, yeah, we're going to conceal those parts. Just go in with the wand and apply a thin layer here near the tear duct and a little here on the outside towards the temples. You could also go over your lid and prime it with the concealer, but you could also use an eye primer for the eyelid. That will help your eyeshadow shades last longer. And then you can, but you don't need to. You can conceal the nose bridge a little to make it look a little higher, pointed, pointed higher. And then you can also apply a little on the T-zone here in the center. So since I have a small forehead, it is good to highlight it with concealer and so that it looks more high and more bright. And a little on the chin, just a little. Then we apply our contour product. It is easier to work with creamier products to sculpt the face. Depending on your face shape, you might contour differently than me, but imagine an imaginary oval shape in your mind when looking in the mirror. Now, if your face shape does not fit in the imaginary oval shape because it is more squarish on the forehead or on the jawline area, then those are the parts you would contour to create a more soft rounded face shape. So to make it simple for you, here are the parts you would always need to contour despite your face shape. It's along the cheekbone up until the hollow of the cheek and along your nose bridge to give it more structure and warmth. So the reason why we always go under the cheekbone is because we want those defined cheekbones. Um, since the media says it looks better. <laughs> but yeah, it looks harmonious to, to our eyes. That is why we do that. And um, yeah, the nose 
mainly because you want to make it smaller uh, or higher pointed uh, but I do it because I like my nose to be a little more warm looking a little more tanned uh, now depending on how long or squarish your chin your jawline or your forehead looks you could additionally contour these parts as well by applying product along the edges Start from the top of the ears and line it until here. Don't go further down, otherwise it will make the cheek area hanging. And that's not what we want. We want the cheekbone to look uh, defined and lifted. That is why we stop here. This would be like right here uh, at the first one third of your eye on the outer edge. We could do the nose as well, as I said, along the nose bridge, a little around the tip. You could do the tip to make it look a little more lifted or higher. Um, well, I have a small forehead, I don't need to contour it. So my jawline looks defined and my chin is okay. It's not too long, it's not too squarish, so I leave it like that. Then I would go in and blend it with my beauty blender upwards because we want it to look lifted, that is why we work upwards. To set the cream products on the T-zone as well as under the eye in place, we apply a setting powder that is loose or pressed. A setting powder is not a normal pigmented powder, it is more of a lightweight powder that has little to no color pigments, which means it does not cover additionally, it just sets the creamy products to set in place and not to crease in fine mimic lines. So this is my setting powder, it's a pressed setting powder, but you can also use a translucent loose powder. Um, so. As I said, these powders don't cover, they just set the makeup. So for that, I'm using a powder brush. So you go in and dab it a little on the back of your hand and look up and apply in sweeping motions towards your temples. So I want my nose also to look flat. That is why I'm going in and apply maybe a little on my forehead and on my chin. So to give the face a little more of a healthy tan, we now go over the contoured parts with a bronzer. And please note, a bronzer is not a contour product since it does not do the job of creating shadow and depth to sculpt the face like it did. So to go into our bronzer, we use an angled bronzer brush um, you can use this also for the cheek area, that is uh, why I'm going to do that as well. Uh, I'm going to sh uh, show you how to use it. So, you take a little, dab it and go over the contoured parts in sweeping motions uh, upwards of the face. Depending on uh, what intensity you like, uh, you should build it up. Okay, I also go on the forehead. I didn't uh, contour my forehead, but I would like to go over the forehead because I like it to look tanned, but it's personal preferences. You don't need to, but I like to. I like my temples and my forehead to look tanned. I also like my nose to look tanned. Uh, it will give you that sun-kissed makeup look. That is why I go over the bridge. This is how it looks. Just go around the nose, on the nose bridge, under the tip, and maybe a little under the jawline. Now we need a flash of color that will make our complexion look more radiant. So we apply a blush on the apples of the cheek. Yeah, you could use a blush brush as well, but I'm using an angled bronzer brush since I like uh, my blush to be applied on the cheekbones as well, but I focus mainly on the apples of my cheek. Apply a circular motion and apply the rest of the product that is left on the brush 
and sweeping motions lightly above your cheekbone. I'm a fan of sun-kissed makeup looks. That is why I go with the blush a little also on my nose bridge. Okay, now comes the last step to the face makeup. This step is optional depending on whether you like a dewy glowy finish or not and whether your skin area you want to highlight or illuminate with a highlighter actually is blemish free. You can now apply a highlighter. Please note, this time we are not talking about the concealer that works as a highlighter in the previous step. This highlighter or illuminator is a product with a shimmery or glowy finish. You have the choice between a cream or a powder highlighter. So for a more dewy look, a cream highlighter is perfect and a more glowy shimmery, a powder highlighter will do the job. So we apply it again on the highest parts of the face where the light would hit our face when we stand under it. Focus on applying it on the cheekbones, you can also apply it on the nose bridge and its tip. Some also apply it on the chin, but I would not recommend it, especially if you deal with oily skin. Then maybe leave the nose part as well, the cheekbones are enough, otherwise it might end up looking greasy. I basically like to wear a cream highlighter in the summer because I think it looks nice when the sun reflects on it in winter because it's more cloudy, it doesn't blend in well with your skin. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to apply my all-time favorite cream highlighter from Shiseido. Use a powder, use a medium sized blending brush, it should be fluffy and go over the highest parts of your face. Now we switch to the eye makeup. We want to keep it very simple for the daily makeup, hence we work with light to medium light nude shades like warm earth tones or uh, rose wood pink tones like these. I would recommend a smaller palette that uh, you can um, take with yourself wherever you go that is handy and um, yeah, that is perfect for beginners because the less choice of colors you have, the easier for you to mix and match colors and uh, yeah, create an eye makeup look. So for this look, I am going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Luxury Palette. Um, so for the eye makeup application, we will need, I will keep it simple, there are so many eye makeup brushes out there, but as I said, I want to keep it simple so you understand and don't get confused at the end of this video. Um, so I will use an applicator brush and a blending brush. Applicator brush is flat danced, great to apply eyeshadow on your lid and this one is great to blend the harsh edges after the application. So we're going to first apply the lighter shade which is uh, this one all over our mobile lid. Okay, when the concealer creases just Go over it with your fingers and make it set in place and then we go over it with the lighter shade just like so when you open your eyes this is basically where your eyes would crease when they are open. That is the crease line and that is where your eyeshadow should end. You shouldn't go further. By the way, I have a more detailed video on how to apply eyeshadow correctly and how to blend it correctly uh, with all the terms and tools and products you need in another video which I, I'm going to link down below. The next step would be to blend the applied eyeshadow. I'm going to blend it here on the crease line in sweeping motion. You see how that line disappears, the hard edge disappears. The reason why I don't recommend you to work with dark shades in the beginning um, is because you simply can mess up and uh, that will be frustrating. <laughs> 
and yeah that's why practice with lighter shades at first okay that is perfect uh, and now we want to create depth to create a little more depth um, we go in uh, to the darker shade of this palette this darker matte shade and apply it um, this time only with the uh, blender brush blending brush on the outer edge of the eye in the crease here in the crease press it in the crease and stay in the crease and you see it's darker here at the outside it's okay so and then we blend 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 in sweeping motions blend in sweeping motions sweeping motion slightly go towards our brow bone so when you notice you have accidentally applied too much product just go over with your fingers and take it off mainly take it off on the above the crease line since uh, that is where the color should look diffused and blended look it's corrected now <laughs> you don't have any hard edges anymore Okay, and then we go again with uh, the same blending brush with the same motions please um, don't use too much product um, build up the intensity so now for the lower lash line uh, we can use or should use uh, this darker shade on the outer one third of the outer edge of the eye to create that lifted eye effect give it a good last blend uh, without any with a brush without any product on just go over these lines and make them blended and diffused now you have the option to go with a shimmery shade on the inner part of your eye on the tear duct for example to make it look more bright and make it pop out um, that is why I go with the uh, highlighter shade here and go here in my tear duct with my pinky. So now on to enhancing the upper lash line. It is optional to apply an eyeliner. Now if you are a beginner, you could apply your eyeliner with an eyeliner brush and a brown to black eyeshadow shade. Just follow your upper lash line until the outer edge and apply a thin line just to enhance your natural lash line. You could do the same step with a cool liner or an eyeliner product. I recommend to work with a creamy cool liner or a precise felt tip eyeliner for beginners. Please note that you cannot apply a sharp winged eyeliner with eyeshadow and cool liner so if you want to go for a winged liner then you have to use uh, the precise felt tip liner since that will give you that sharp winged line you will need. I will spare you the struggle of a wing liner in this tutorial since I think that it is not something you must know as a beginner that only wants a daily makeup that is quick but enhances the beauty. So that is why I use my eyeliner brush with uh, the brown eyeshadow shade and apply it on my upper lash line starting from the inner corner you can also work with black but currently I am in love with brown liners it's really easy and if you mess up it's okay because you can still blend it and make it look okay <laughs> Okay, I don't know whether you can see, but I have enhanced my upper lash line so that my lashes look more voluminous when I apply mascara on. So the lashes step is also easy. Curl your lashes with a lash curler if you deal with naturally flat lashes to achieve nice lifted lashes when applying mascara next. Other than that, if you are blessed with curled lashes, go ahead and apply mascara. 
But don't get me wrong, uh, I, I think a la using a lash curler in general make your lashes look more lifted and beautiful. That is why you might not want to skip that. <laughs> So in general, two coats of mascara are enough. Wait until the first coat is dry, then apply the second to avoid spider effect or compu lashes. Apply your mascara in zigzag motion, starting from the root up until the tip. That will make your lashes not stick together and it will coat each lash hair individually. So this is the first coat. We let it dry while applying mascara on the second eye. Now to the brow steps. So first of all, you need to fill gaps in your brows if available with a brow pencil. Here's a trick. Brush down your brow hair with a brow groomer, then draw precise hair-like strokes beginning from the beginning of your brow up, up until the arc and the tail of the brow. So what that does is basically make uh, the gaps more obvious so that you can go and fill them in. Okay, look, I have filled the gaps and now I would brush my brow hairs in that grow direction and et voila they look fuller now you see i want to shape my brows as well so what i'm going to do is to apply again starting from the beginning hair like strokes in the beginning here upwards and then here as well and here on the arc as well i have some missing hairs and then here i want the tail to look a little thicker that is why i'm going to apply one to two the three hair like strokes here at the end as well make them look maybe a little more pigmented press a little harder you see here is also like there are no hairs missing gaps don't press too hard in the beginning of the brow since uh, that will uh, start to look fake really easily in the end you can do that at the end of the brow but not in the beginning since that will look like too drawn <laughs> you could also make your brow look longer while just applying one stroke here at the end additionally so we have shaped and filled our eyebrows now we want the brow hairs to be fixed so that they don't move during the day. We could do that with a brow fixing gel. I'm going to use the fixing gel here and brush my brows towards the growth direction. Another tip would be to work with a brow mascara. What a brow mascara does is it gives your eyebrows more volume and enhances them, but it's hard to shape your brows with a brow mascara. So in case you have fuller natural looking brows and you just want to enhance them, just use a brow mascara. It's really easy. Just brush your brows towards the hair growth direction and that's it basically. The lips are the easiest part. Choose your lip liner product and color of choice to frame the lips. Once the lips are framed, you can apply lipstick to paint it. You could slightly overline your lips with the lip liner to make the lips uh, look bigger, but don't overdo it, otherwise it might end up looking fake and that is not what we want. Now, if you plan to overline your lips, use nude shaded lip liners like nude pinks or nude light browns. Um, since that will blend in with your actual skin tone well and it will make it appear much more natural. Now if you plan to do it with another shade, let's say red or another dark berry shade, um, it will start to look unnatural if you overdo it. Do you see this white line over my lips? This is basically the line where you're allowed to over a line that is like basically your uh, border now if you have a creamy lip liner like mine you could fill in your lips and that could be basically your lip makeup but 
since we want it to look a little more creamy and soft and hydrated, I go over it with a creamy lipstick. But if you want your lipstick to uh, last longer, then I recommend you to work with matte products. Um, you could also only go for a matte uh, lip liner. Now if you apply a lot of matte products, don't forget to apply a lip balm and let it absorb. Since we're going to apply lipstick, we don't fill in uh, evenly. So this is my lipstick of choice. It's called Shush Blush from Marc Jacobs. It's creamy. <laughs> If you want your lipstick to look good on your lips for a long time, apply a thin layer, please. Don't apply a thick layer. And you could block your lips uh, with a tissue just to get rid of excess product. For the final step, we apply a setting spray to set the makeup. It will help your makeup to lock into your skin and make it last the whole day without fading away. There are setting sprays with additional mattifying and hydrating effects, so again, take your skin type into consideration. Spray in a distance of 20 to 30 centimeters and let it dry. That's it for the daily makeup look tutorial for beginners. I hope I could be helpful enough to the beginners out there. I know how overwhelming it all can be at the beginning, but trust the process and the progress you are going to make after a few attempts. In case this was not detailed enough for you, I suggest you to enroll in my bestseller Makeup Artist 3 Basic to Master online makeup course. There you will learn all the fundamentals of Makeup Artist 3 with a focus on detail. I will add the link in the description box down below for you to preview. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video for more beauty content.